Hey everyone, Miss Pariso here to go over two-step equations with you. So you have these notes here, and we have our steps. And this is kind of the steps that you want to think about as you're solving basically any equation. Our focus today is going to be on just the two-step equations. So as in any equation, we want to isolate the variable, basically meaning get it all alone, okay? So we need to think about undoing the order of operations. So we need to use the inverse operation. So what's happening currently to the variable? It's multiplying by two and we're subtracting four. So that means we need to come up with a plan. Undo it by dividing by two and undo it by adding by four. But we have to undo them in reverse order of operations. So we wanna undo any adding and subtracting first, then undo the multiplying and dividing, if we need to take care of any square roots, we can. That's how we would undo an exponent. And if something is protected with parentheses, you cannot undo anything inside that until you do all those other steps first. And the thing that's nice about equations is that we can always plug our answer in to see if we got it correct. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and try some. I, I encourage you to pause the video and give it a shot. And then when you're ready to check your answers, you can you can see, but I'm going to show you how I would like to show your work. Okay, so here, um, whenever I approach this, I like to kind of keep up my two sides of my equation. So I draw a little set of rail, railroad tracks. Some people have called it a river, but basically if you're gonna cross over to the other side, you have to be doing the opposite operation. So um, I like to pay attention to where is my variable. Variable's right there. Okay, so be careful because I can see here that I'm multiplying by a negative three and then this is a positive 4.5. So technically I'm adding that. So if I wanted to see it just a different way, I could really rewrite it to look like this. Because sometimes when it's like this, it looks like we're it, some students have interpreted it as we're subtracting three or we're subtracting 4.5. And it might be hard to see how to do the opposite. So now that I've just kind of rearranged it, to put that variable first so I just know what belongs with it, now I'm going to go ahead and do my opposites. And I like to show my steps. Whatever I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. So instead of adding 4.5, I'm going to undo that by subtracting 4.5 on both sides. So when I do that, I have two negatives, so I'm going to go ahead and just combine them. So that's going to be 6, and it's going to be a negative because I'm adding them. I'm adding two negatives. All right, and so over here, this created a zero pair, so that cancels out. And on the right-hand side, I'm left with negative 3w. Okay, and as always, I'm going to stay focused on my variable. So there's my variable. So now... I'm multiplying by a negative three, so I'm gonna divide both sides by a negative three. Be careful not to drop your negative sign. So negative six divided by a negative three is a positive two. You don't have to write the positive sign. The only reason I'm doing it is so it's like a visual reminder that yeah, I made sure to take care of my signs. So there is my final answer. W is equal to positive two. And if I wanted to, I could take that and plug that back in. And I'll just do that. Um, let's see if I can squeeze it in here. I'll squeeze it up top. So negative 1.5 equals 4.5 minus 3. Well, I'm saying that it should be 2. Now, if my answer is correct, when I go to solve this, I will have matching, the, both sides will match. So I get negative 1.5, 4.5 minus 6 is negative 1.5 because they match. I know that I got my answer correct. So that is a great strategy for checking your work. Okay. All right. Before we move on to sec the second one, go ahead, pause the video, try it, see if you can figure that one out. And when you're ready, come back and join us. Okay. So I'm going to say that you took time to work the problem out. Let's see if we matched. So again, here is my variable. And I see that I'm dividing my variable by 4 and I'm subtracting 4. So I'm going to undo the subtracting first by adding 4 to both sides. And then I always bring down what I have not done. So these guys canceled out because they made a 0 pair. So I brought down the W divided by 4 equals 1. Okay. 
Now I'm dividing by four, so I want to multiply both sides by four. And basically, well, that's what I'm doing. I'm multiplying by that reciprocal. So it's four over one. So when we do that, those cancel each other out. And we get W equals four. And if I plug that back in, four divided by four is one. And one minus four does give me negative three. So I know that I did it correctly. Okay, number three. Put in those railroad tracks. All right, pay attention to where your variable is. So something else that I also like to do is you might even do, this is like my little what's happening corner to kind of organize my thoughts. I'm multiplying by a negative two thirds. So how am I gonna undo that? I'm gonna divide by a negative two thirds. But when you divide by a fraction, remember that really means that it's gonna multiply by the reciprocal. So that's how we're gonna undo it. Because dividing by two thirds is the same as multiplying by three over two, okay? So just, I just have a negative here. And so then I'm adding five, so the opposite of that is subtracting five. So this could even be something, if you have a hard time organizing your thoughts, kind of come up with a game plan before you start. All right, so instead of adding five, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract five from both sides. These guys are zero pair, so those cancel out, and I'm left with negative two-thirds x equals 17 minus five is 12. Now, I already came up with my game plan. So something that I notice students do, and it, it's hard, especially with that dividing, is they don't know which one to flip. So that's why I feel like this is such an important step. We're trying to get rid of this fraction. So I need to create something that when I, when I flip flop them notice, and I gotta keep that sign, the three is gonna cancel that three out, the two is gonna cancel the two out. So I gotta do the same thing over here, three over two negative three over two, negative two, negative two, that's gonna cancel out. And I'm gonna get X equals, and we can just throw this over a one to help us out there. So negative 36 over two, and I can simplify that further. So I get X equals negative 18. Okay, and then again, I could go back and plug that in. So I can just do, here's like my little check negative two thirds times negative 18 plus five, I'm supposed to get 17. Well, two times 18 is 36, and 36 divided by three is 12, and that's positive because negative times negative, so I get a positive 12 plus five, and I get 17, which means I got my answer correct. Okay, let's go on to number four here. Don't let decimals freak you out. It's all the same rules, all the same rules here. So again, focus on what's happening to your variable. So let's go ahead and get rid of this 15 hundredths over here. Make sure with decimals, you line everything up. Okay, so those guys cancel out. I'm left with 0.03x equals and always start with your subtraction, zero. Now careful, it's not gonna be a one. This is where we gotta do that borrowing stuff. Okay. All right, so now we have 0.03. I'm okay if you guys wanna use a calculator, although I do challenge you to see if you can do without. Okay, so we're gonna divide. And for those of you, so basically here's what it looks like. We have 3.90 underneath. And we have 0 0.03 out here. Well, we can move the decimal over two places. So it's now we're dividing by three. But whatever you do to the one, you got to do the other. You got to play fair. One, two. So now the decimal is here. I'm going to lock it in. Three goes into three once. Three goes into nine three times. But we're not done. I didn't hit the decimal. Three goes into zero zero times. So we get 130. All right, now on these last two, you've got two different methods for when you're dealing with fractions. Because I know that when we see fractions, we're like, oh my God, fractions. Ah. All right, so I'm going to show you um, my way of approaching these. Is that if I see a fraction, um, I want to I want to get rid of it. I like, you know, I don't I don't like the looks of fractions. Um, and so 
the way that you can do that is, remember in an equation, as long as you, whatever you do to one side, if you do to the other, it'll still make a true statement, okay? So basically, I want to get rid of the fractions. I want to multiply them by something that's going to create it into be a whole number. Well, to do that, let me highlight this. Basically, I need a number that is divisible by 2, 3, and 4. So I need a common multiple of 2, 3, and 4. Now, there's a lot. You can choose a least common multiple if you want. Um, you can just multiply them all together and, and go for it. So some examples would be 12. 12, you know, it can be divided by 2, by 3, and by 4. Maybe you said 24. 24 would work as well. Okay, so you can pick. So here's what I'm going to do. Again, focus on my variable. Okay, the first thing when I see a fraction is I don't want them. I don't like fractions. So I'm going to take this, and I said that my, my least common multiple for these fractions was 12. Again, you don't have to do the least common multiple. It should just be a common multiple. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 12 just so that way I can get rid of my fractions. So if I do that, I just got to use the distributive property. So 12 times 1 half x is going to be 6x. Oops, let me put my train tracks in. All right, and 12 times negative 1 third is going to be 4. And again, if you need to see that math off to the side, right, that's 12 over 2, which gives me 6. 12 times 1 third is 12 over 3. That's how I got my 4. And then 12 times 3 fourths for the right hand side, that's 36 over 4, which is 9. Now look at that. We don't have to freak out anymore. Okay? Everything looks beautiful. Like, oh, no more fractions in sight. Now let's just keep on moving and grooving and going for it. Okay? So now we can add 4 to both sides. I don't have to worry about anything here. No fractions. Yay. Okay, except for now our final answer. And it, guys, it is okay. You can get a fraction answer. You can get a decimal answer because guess what? They are numbers too. I know that we like to have an integer, a positive or negative whole number. We're so used to that being our final answer. But fraction answers, so that I could leave it like that. It is in simplest form. Okay, so that is simplified. It is improper, but it is simplified because I can't divide them both. But maybe I want to write it as a mixed number. So 6 goes into 13 two whole times with a remainder of 1. Okay? So if it doesn't specify how it wants your answer, you can do either way. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try number 6 using this approach. Get rid of the fractions. What can you multiply both sides by to get rid of the fraction to make a nice, neat, pretty equation? And then solve from there. When you're ready, press play and let's check back in. Okay, let's see how you did. Again, if you didn't use this approach, oops, sorry about that bell there. If you didn't use this approach, that's totally fine. Um, but I, again, I like to get rid of those fractions. I don't wanna have to deal with them. So I multiply both sides by six. Okay, and you can see my messy math off to the side, how I did that. So if you, if you got stuck there where I got those numbers, and then I went ahead and subtracted 3 and divided by 4. Be careful right here, okay? It's 2 divided by 4, not 4 divided by 2. So the answer is not 2. 2 over 4 is 2 fourths, which simplifies to 1 half. So if you wrote it as 0 0.5, that's fine. Just know that if this was like a multiple choice question, I may leave it in fraction form. So you kind of want to be familiar with both ways. All right, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care.